Hello, hello, everybody. Blah, ah, blah, frog throat, man. Right on cue. Let's try that again. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the last call. I am Punk Rockian. That is Gabe. That's me. Hope everybody's doing well uh, on this Thursday evening. Um, I don't know if y'all... Uh, I, I know there's been a lot going on on the news. Probably a lot of stuff that people... Well, you know what? I'm not even going to comment on that. I was going to make a joke. But there's been a lot of shit on the news. But somewhere buried in there, you might have noticed there was a hurricane. Um, barely a hurricane, by the way. When it came, it was only a Cat 1, which, you know, that's barely breaking a sweat here. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it kept me rather busy. Uh, we did not lose power, sir. See, I thought we were going to lose power. Uh, we only had one flutter with the internet, and it only lasted like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm, I like, thank you for setting up the irony that whenever the storm reaches us up here, we'll probably lose power now. Yeah. yeah, yeah it happens. But you know, when you told me that another one was coming through, I was like, I went into full gay panic mode, and I was like, do I need, do you need help? And then <laughs> it, it, it's a cat one. And I and I immediately like my brain went back to Wilmington mode, and I was like, "You getting a rainstorm? Why'd you even tell yeah. me?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the only reason is it was funny because like right when it came in, like right where the eye like made contact, like it pretty much hit the town that I'm in. So like that that's that like center mass is right where I was at. Um, no, yeah, we just got rain. And uh, maybe like 30, 35 mile an hour winds is about it. <laughs> you know, and it was go and it, it was moving fast. That was the thing. Like, I would notice that, like, when just the bands were coming by, like, they would last for like 10 minutes and then you wouldn't hear one for like 45 and then another, but it would only last. Like, it was, it was a fast moving storm. No lingering at all. Just, in and out, and you're yeah. golden. It was sunshine in the day. <laughs> Would you call it a come and go sort of hurricane? Yeah, I mean, the most uh, cleanup that I had to do was I went out to the backyard to get the one chair that blew like a little bit into the yard. <laughs> I asked that because on the map it looked like a giant cock and balls on the side of the u.s so if it was a come and go i'm, you know, I'm glad it went fast it's funny you said that because i noticed that as well while watching the radar and i was making the joke with the wife of you know the shape of that and then the shape of florida and i'm like oh they're about they're it's about to dock <laughs> and i'm like and i'm like we're we're, we're riding the dockage is what we're doing <laughs> the 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 hurricane and the state of Florida are going to gently touch tips. It's, it's you know if happens. I if I would have had enough uh, forethought, and the majority of my friends still lived here, I would have went out of my way instead of saying it's a hurricane party. I would have made that like fucking arm flex uh, flyer that they did, and it's always sunny, but it was but it looked like a dick. <laughs> and I'd say, hey, come to the docking party. <laughs> I'm kind of mad you didn't get to do that, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but I used that um, in uh, that obscene joke to segue into something wholesome. Oh, good. Um, so uh, the storm, while not disastrous, uh, did kind of fuck up some plans. Um, because you had hyped up the uh, the Dawn of the Dead 3D so well, sir. So well. Um, I had made arrangements to go on Monday, but that's kind of when the announcement went out that it was going to hit the town. And I was just like, well, this is great. Now I'm like, it's going to be equally empty because like anybody who would have gone to the showing is just like going to be like at the store buying shit now. And I'm like, I don't have to worry about that. Um, but my buddy who was going to go with me, whose roof has been giving him shit for the better part of at least three years now, uh, I was like, oh, yeah, you, you, you got some shit to deal with. I, I got you. 
Um, it's literally Swiss cheese up there with a tarp. <laughs> oh damn, damn. So <laughs> it's like it's like fuck, man. All right, like like uh, you know, as far as excuses go, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so I did not get to do that. So then. I was just like, well, let's take the daughter. Fuck school. There was no school that day anyway. But um, it was canceled here too, by the way. <laughs> uh, but but alas, the storm played havoc with that, and and for some reason, places decided to close. And I was just like, God damn it. So instead, because God damn it, I made a plan. <laughs> I mean, if it was just me, it'd be one thing. But I made a plan with the kid. So, uh, I, um, creatively acquired the unrated, uh, Dawn of the Dead <laughs> and, uh, turned the garage into a theater and, uh, we, we watched that and she, uh, I, I gave her the proper, very e early, uh, history, a quick e uh, history lesson, you know, like, okay, this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is where zombies were in, in, in time. You know, like, like not really everything, you know, now kind of comes from this and maybe like a movie or two beforehand. That's about it. <laughs> and uh, I I explained who Tom Savini was and, and uh, the inspirations from Vietnam. <laughs> so she was prepared for that. Um, but a. I have watched movies with her before. Absolutely no problem. Always a good time. This one, however, was a blast. Just cracking jokes left and right. <laughs> um, and at the end of the day, uh, she enjoyed it. Uh, she she thought it was uh, so. She's like, damn, they did a lot, and you know, they they could actually do stuff like that back then. Like you know, when the you know, dude's getting ripped apart and you saw the insides and stuff. You know. Um. But my favorite part had nothing to do with watching the movie. My favorite part was overhearing something afterwards where she was discussing stuff with her friends and she thought she was just cool shit. She's like, I got to watch an unrated movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, you did. <laughs> Wholesome. Yeah. I love it. Mm hmm I instantly hearken back to those uh those times of me being up late at like two AM with my little cable box in my room watching stuff and I'm like, Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait to tell everybody at school about this fucking movie I just watched. <laughs> I was the most enthusiastic uh fifth grader talking about Leprechaun Two. <laughs> Ian, you can make her like have like 10,000 more cool points by saying not only was the movie unrated it was never sent to be rated that that's the only thing that tops that I think is what is Wes Craven submitting what last house on the left to get an R rating and releasing the unrated cut to theaters anyway <laughs> it was funny how um I think one of the funnier parts was is that uh when they left uh when Flyboy and and uh, and the two the two guards there were out running amok, doing a little shopping spree in the in the mall, and and the, and they left the chick behind, and then eventually the one zombie, the 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 her Krishna, Krishna zombie, yeah. <laughs> which that was a fun uh, explanation too. She's like, why are they dressed like that? <laughs> well, like, see, there were airports in the eighties, and... <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so. Anyway, but they eventually come back, and she and I was just sitting there, and I'm like, and I'm like, all right, she should probably start dishing out fucking bitch slaps right about now. And she's like, right? <laughs> she's just like, they just left her there. <laughs> they, like, they didn't even give her a gun. And then when the next time when she asked for the gun, she's like, damn right. <laughs> we let always... we let we, we let our kids cuss in our house. <laughs> That's fair within reason. They just they just got to know there's a time and a place, you know. That's, that's the lesson. That's that's the the main important. It's like context, <laughs> context and timing, and uh, never say anything that you don't understand. Yeah. Or, you know, don't be me during a work meeting and say what the shit when you find out something has gone 
terribly awry <laughs> for the day. And then your boss is like, in in front of every, you know, just you know, yeah, actual face. You know, don't lesson lessons learned today. Um, are you going to let her watch Day of the Dead? You know, it was funny because like I was thinking about certain things. I was getting, I tell you, like unless it's um. Night of the Living Dead or Return of the, or or one of the you know Re- Return of the Deads are easy to spot, um, but uh, for some reason all of these of the Deads the majority I just I get them mixed up. <laughs> so when watching this with her, I was sitting here. I was actually um, God damn it now, and I feel bad for uh, for getting his name because he was in Dawn of the Dead for a brief moment. But uh, the, yes, yes, yeah. and uh, because I was expecting him, but the underground where they got the zombies pinned up that's what I'm like, that's what we're watching, right? <laughs> but then I remembered, I'm like, no, wait, we talked about the mall, and I'm like, did they do that in the mall? Did they have that under the mall? And I'm like, that doesn't make sense, <laughs> but then I saw him. And I'm like, oh, and, and I explained to her, and I'm like, he's a famous asshole, but not in real life, only on film. <laughs> <laughs> Pol- polar opposite in real life, apparently. Uh, did we ever watch the special features on FX where you, he, they had the interview with him? Because he seems he se- I would have loved to have been at that pool party that they filmed it at. Because it was funny. Because I was explaining how much of an asshole he is on film, and she even asked me. She was like, "Is he an asshole in real life?" I'm like, "No," <laughs> and I'm like, "It's the beauty of acting." And I'm like, and I'm like, no, there are some actors that are like, don't, you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything for you. But and I'm like, in this case, <laughs> I think you're all right. Yeah, uh, I don't think I've ever heard any horror stories about. It. I've heard horror stories about Tom Savini, but it, when you when people start explaining more of what happened, it starts to make a lot of sense why he was an asshole. So there's always two sides to every encounter. Yeah. <laughs> um. So now, but uh. One more, one more thing with, with with that as well. I'm not, I'm not telling you you should do this, but I know you'll probably want to do it anyway. Y'all should watch Night of the Living Dead and Night of the Living Dead remake. Mm-hmm. And, and really set set her on a course for. Uh, here's here's the first movie that's extremely bleak. Here's the remake that's going to make you feel slightly more bleak about what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> we, with Darren, uh, when we watched Night of the Living Dead for the Horror Fest, I forgot to bring it up. Um, me and Chandler and uh, Jacob were sitting around talking about it. And uh, Jacob's never seen the remake. And he okay. was actually excited because he was, he thought we were watching it that night, but we, we changed it because of the um, the Criterion release. And I brought up that the remake is somehow more bleak, and its soundtrack is killer. And he was like, "How? How do you explain <laughs> that? How do you explain that the remake of *The Living Dead* is more bleak? It's very. I think it's it's difficult. You have to kind of watch it to be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's one of those things where even I, on first, like, before watching it, just being told that it existed. I, that, so I'm like, why would you do that? Like, why would you even make? But then you start getting some of the facts, like who made it, who's in it, you know, stuff like that. And you're like, well, I mean, if it had to be done, this is the way that it needed to be done. So you can't really complain about that anymore. And then you're just like, well, I mean, all right, I, 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 I guess. And then you watch it and you're just like, wow, okay. Uh, I Dare I say... I'm not going to say it was the same personal experience. I feel like if I'm to convey this in a mainstream way, uh, a lot of people dislike the Stallone dread. But when that remake came out, everybody was just like, holy fucking shit. (laughs) I like both. But (laughs) one's a comic book movie and one's an action movie. Right now. But that's besides the point. But it's kind of one of those situations where you're just like, Oh, I get what they're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if it was like 
I don't want to say like they they did the, better, but do you think it? I think that the original has that level in it. It's just it wasn't able to be conveyed properly for whatever reason and i'm not saying it like you know it, it was like a at the fault of, i mean i'm not gonna say like oh Romero, you romero you fucked up i'm not gonna say that that's not <laughs> no it's not what i'm saying but uh th this had never really been done before mm -hmm. so you got to throw that in the equation now that they, they're going coming at it with the benefit of hindsight so I'm wondering if it's just as simple as that. Because we've gone through all of the reasons why it should not work, but it does. So why does it work? <laughs> That's fair. I, I, a lot, a lot of... Uh... In the in the past week, a, there's been a lot of Night of the Living Dead talk, and that's why when you brought up that you were going to do Dawn of the Dead 3D, and then you had the contingency plan because of you know the the hurricane, I was like, we're getting Zombie Weekend late in the year, and I'm okay with it. Someone's on uh, the comment section somewhere said that you can't say that Night of the Living Dead had the potential for a sequel because by the end of it, it's implied that the epidemic is ending and i was like at what point during the end of the movie did that happen because the only thing that i remember is the sheriff said we should be wrapped up in a couple of hours but there's i mean he's no just talking about that area yeah i mean i've always looked at it like i mean regardless of how happy like because i the, even with the uh, dawn of the dead where i'm like okay same state <laughs> you know i'm like this is the same event it's just like a few spots over you know what i mean with different people yeah. that's just kind of how i and i'm like and it's like this everywhere i think the, the one of the best ex explanations for that timeline is night of the living dead is uh zero hour and dawn of the dead is like a week later yeah. which makes total sense okay that's fair Society can collapse in a week. That's a bad week to say it, but society yeah. <laughs> can collapse in a week. Yeah. So I, I I don't I don't I don't know that that one that one bothered me and I've been meaning to bring it up and I keep forgetting. So I, here seemed like a pretty good place too. But it was a success. Um, I will be planning more uh, film ventures. Uh, I guess. See now when. Back in the day, back in the day when I was a young lad and my mom would make me watch movies that, whether I wanted to watch them or not, uh, she would be like, okay, you, you kind of need to watch this this movie because it's like a famous movie. Um, if it was something that I didn't want to watch to begin with, she would always refer to it as educational punishment. Um, but... Uh, and I'm like, I'm kind of taking my own spin on that, but I'm just. And of course, we say educational punishment in a loving ha ha kind of way, because it's really not a punishment to watch those movies. Um, that's how I saw a lot of like I said, I didn't want to watch uh, that fucking Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> that was educational punishment. Um, 1776, the musical. Fucking amazing. Hey, yeah, I, it started my love affair of John Adams, by the way. Like, I mean, I don't give a shit about policies or anything like that. Just him as an individual human being is, is fucking. <laughs> what just happened? Yeah, I'm telling you, man, I'm fucking a lot of stuff stored up in there. But anyway, I plan on doing that with the kiddo, but just, you know, horror style and more, you know, I don't know. Something like that. Some to that. I'm passing on family tradition is what I'm getting at here. It's about family. Family. <laughs> yeah, I got you. That's 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 pretty cool. Though. I feel I feel like uh, as a youth myself, uh, mine started with the uh, my mom letting me watch the X Files, and then it kind of snowballed out when mom let Chandler watch Halloween. Uh, Predator got thrown into the mix, and you know we started. You know, tw I got I got you know Twilight Zone, and then. They put me on Night of the Living Dead. I don't know how the hell that happened. I ended up with Night of the Living Dead. Chandler ended up with Halloween. And since then, I just—I I guess I just, you know, stuck with it. But there's something really 
embedded in our DNA, I think, as a family that we do that. And now I see that maybe I'm not so crazy thinking that because you're doing the exact same thing yeah. on your end, and it just traditions down the line. 